right afterwards. I want to talk 1 Peter uh, chapter 4. Talk about suffering for being a Christian. Did you know that just because you're a Christian, you're going to go through some more trials than maybe someone else? I don't know, Pastor. I don't know if that's true. Well, the fact is that when you decided to follow the Lord, you upset some things. You decided that you're going to be a chain breaker. You're going to decide that you're going to serve the Lord. You see, the enemy don't like that. So the enemy is out to hurt you. The enemy is out to create problems. You know, I was reading in 1 Peter. Every once in a while, it's good to look at all the different epistles, isn't it? All the different uh, things that the Lord says. It says, Dear friends, do not be surprised at the painful trial you are suffering. As though something strange were happening to you. But rejoice that you have that you participate in the sufferings of Christ. We're talking about the things that you go through as a follower of Christ. You see, you're a marked individual. When you stepped out of line and you decided to follow the Lord, there's like a target on your back a little bit. I don't know if that's true. How many of you know when Jesus was born, there was a target on his back? There was. Did you know that the enemy was trying to get rid of Jesus from the very beginning? He was. All throughout his ministry, from birth, Herod. And then he did get rid of him. The cross. But did you know that the cross was nothing more, though, than God's will to advance the cause of Christ? Did you know that maybe your suffering has purpose? Did you know that maybe the things you're going through, maybe there is a bigger picture to it? I don't know. Oh, it is true. Through the stripes of Jesus, we're healed. That's true. But the fact is, sometimes we're going to struggle. Sometimes we're going to go through things we don't like. What does that mean? Does that mean God is not with us? That don't mean that. You know, some people think that if you're a pastor or a follower of the Lord, that things ought to go perfect. Let me tell you this. In Christ, we're all the same, aren't we? There's no one better or no one worse. In Christ, we're all the same. We all experience the same things. So we're here as a fellowship, as a group. We're here because we need God. That's not a weakness, my brother, my sister. That's a strength. You see, when you know your limits, when you know how much you can do, and you give the rest to the Lord, that's a strength. So we're here as a, a body of believers, some here, some not, but we're still collectively together. Some listening online, it's irrelevant. We're here in spirit, and God wants to help you. God wants to work in your life. So what can we say about the things you go through? What can we say about those things that you deal with on a regular basis? First of all, he says this. He says, don't be surprised. You got it up there. Okay, I know. Don't be surprised. Sometimes we are surprised, aren't we? And what Peter was trying to say is, listen, these things are going to happen. It doesn't mean God left you. It doesn't mean that there's something wrong. He says, don't be surprised. 
So here's what I want to say. When things come your way, when you're hurting, when things aren't going exactly the way you thought, know that maybe the author of it, yes, is the enemy. Maybe it is an attack. Maybe it's something that you're just going to have to endure. That, but I will say this. God wins in the end. I will say this. You might have some affliction for a while, but God wins in the end. Did Satan win over Jesus? Did he? No. Oh, it seemed like it. Sure, there were the beatings, there were the pain, the hurt. It was real. You can't brush that aside. That was real stuff. But who won in the end? Jesus is alive forevermore. He lives forevermore. Here's what I want to say to you. God knows what he's doing in your life. You need to hang on. You need to not give up. And every once in a while, give the enemy a little kick. Listen, you know when we were praying, you know why we had corporate prayer? Because I think it's a, it's a kick to the enemy. It's, it's, it's saying, I trust in the Lord. I'm not trusting in myself. I've come to the house of God and I trust in him. My brother, my sister. God loves you. God's going to see you through this thing. God's going to help you get through it. So he says, don't be surprised. Then he, go, he goes on, he says, at the painful trial. You are going to have painful trials from time to time. You are. You're going to have painful trials. No, no, I, I, don't, I don't believe that. Well, you're going to. I remember... I always would think that a, a pastor going through something or, or blaming the Lord, they were weak people when I was younger. Isn't it funny when you're younger how you change over time after you've been through some battles in life? But I remember, uh, oh, you know, if you're complaining or something, you know, maybe you've got to pray more or whatever. Then I went through a testing. And, you know, I came out on the other side of it. Thank the Lord that we come out, don't you? Aren't you glad that you come out of your trials? Aren't you glad that they don't last forever? Aren't you glad that God never leaves you, nor forsake, and he's there with you to walk you through them? So I came out, but you know I had a different perspective. First of all, I saw hurting people a little differently. And where I am, Today, I probably couldn't have compassion. I probably wouldn't be uh, 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 compassionate if I wouldn't have gone through some things. Did you know that the painful trial maybe does have purpose in our life? So it's painful. It says, as though something strange were happening to you. You know, we're, we believe that if we go through something, that... Wow, maybe I did something wrong. Well, maybe you did. Just ask the Lord for forgiveness and get it under the blood and, and move on. He said, as something strange were happening to you. You know, the enemy wants you to think that you're doing this thing alone. The enemy wants you to think that there's something wrong with you, that maybe you, you've gone too far, you, you've offended the Lord, and now you're getting paid back. Come on. That's a lie. God don't pay his children back. God helps his children go through the trial and get to the other side. God isn't here to hurt you. He's here to help you. So he says here at the strange that was happening to you. Sometimes we do think that why is this? I said to my wife yesterday something we're going through again and I said, you know, it just seems like, wow, where'd this come from? And then, you know, I start to think back. I said, well, maybe I wasn't a good dad growing up. Maybe I did some things wrong. Then I thought about it, and I said, well, my dad was a lot worse. Oh, I hope my dad's not listening to this. 
you're a good dad. But I made it through. As a matter of fact, I'm kind of glad that he was a little rough on me because it made me a little tough. So here's what I'm saying. But sometimes the enemy wants you to start thinking, well, maybe you brought this on yourself. Maybe it's something in your past. Well, maybe, maybe, maybe. But I do know this, that God leaves no stone and turn, and he's going to help you through this thing. God's going to get you to where you need to be. Listen, God's love for you is greater than all the... As a matter of fact, he says this. You know what he says about your sin? That he don't remember it no more. So listen, if you sin, let's just say, okay, we've sinned. You know what? We could get it right, right away. As a matter of fact, if you're in their service, you already got it right. We come in here, we sing, we, we allow the, the Holy Spirit to touch our hearts, cleanses us, and we get right with God. Getting right with God is a, is a big thing. We got to get right with God. But it says here, strange is happening to you. But I like this, but rejoice. And here's what I want to say to you. Can you rejoice in all the different things you're going through? I don't know, Pastor, come on. But at the end of the day, be strong in the Lord. Live your life. Be, be, be going out there and, and be, be bold for God and, 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 and be a victorious uh, believer that walks with the Lord. You're not here by accident. This is your day. As long as you have breath, you got a purpose. God has something that he wants you to do. So here's what I'm saying. Rejoice in the affliction. Rejoice in the affliction. Yeah. Rejoice in those things that you go through. How could I do that? Because at the end of the day, if you know that God's got this, you know it's going to, it not, it's going to come to pass. You know that it's, you're going to get over it. Why not enjoy the ride and, and say, God, I'm yours. Why not find something good out of the pain, out of the suffering? God doesn't allow anything to come your way that he's not going to use for your benefit. May I even say this? Let me suggest this to someone. Maybe if you're going through it the most, Maybe God is doing the most through you. Maybe if you're under attack, maybe God has a plan for your future and, and he's going to bring you to that spot. Maybe you're ready for a promotion. Every time God begins to open another door, the enemy attacks and tries to cripple and tries to bring down his children. So if you're under attack, Maybe you ought to open your eyes and be looking for what God is about to do in your life. Some of you know my son isn't doing the best. Sad. We love our kids dearly, don't we? Sure we do. You know, it's hard at times because, you know, you, I get angry. The other day I was thinking, oh, forgive me, I was thinking bad thoughts towards him because he was saying some things. And, but you know what I thought about? One of my older sons. I thought about maybe the enemy is attacking because God is something big and good for his life. You know, the enemy wouldn't be harassing you if God doesn't have a plan for your life. Why would the enemy waste his time? Look at how the enemy attacked Moses. Look how the enemy attacked everyone in the scriptures. Here's what I want to say. As a brother, as a sister, let's stick closer. Let's allow, when you're weak, let's allow someone to come alongside you and stand in the gap for you. You know why we come here? You know, we used to do this back in the old days, you know. You know, come to the altar. I don't know, it seems like 
I'm really not interested in the, the church of lights and everything anymore. I like lights. I like everything. But you know what? I want the real deal. I'm really not, you know, we accidentally took down the lights because of the rain. We're going to get the, 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 the color lights up again. So relax, younger people. But you know, when I took them down, I heard a sermon, a pastor saying, you know, it's not about the glitter. It's not, is it? It's about God working in your life. You know, I remember when I lived in China. I remember when I went to China, there was no churches. There was only a handful. But God was there. Here's what I want to say to you. God's, God's where you're at. Some of you may be hurting. Some of you may be struggling. I am a little bit. One of my brothers just put on how terrible my son is. One of my, you know, and made fun of my family. That hurts me a little bit. Because, you know, we've got saved, got on drugs, and we're trying to live right. And, you know, when someone makes fun or, uh, you know, it hurts, doesn't it? Sure it does. Like something's wrong with, yeah, I admit there's something wrong with one of my kids right now. But as mad as I am, as angry as I am, we can't give up on what God says about us for our life. We can't give up. And here's what I want to say. Have you been attacked? Sure you have. Have your family been under attack? Sure it has. But God is a faithful God. And you know what? The best thing we could do is stand together. Here's what I want you to do. We're going to end. Here's what I want you to do. Throughout the week, know that you belong to the body of Christ. Know that someone could be praying for you right now. Know that someone is standing with you. That you don't have to walk through this life alone. That's big. You know what I like about you? I know you don't judge me. That's why I'm wearing flannel today. I didn't put on a tie. You're not judging me. So here's what I want to say. I don't judge you. I, I always think you're better than me. And I'm just along for the ride. What would you say amen for? Who said amen? I heard that amen somewhere. So here's what I want to say. We're part of a fellowship. Call it a parish. Catholics maybe had it right. Call it a family of God. Call it whatever you want. Some here, some not with us, but we're all together. And let's stand together. I'm going to believe for your kids. You believe for mine. I'm going to believe for your job. Let's believe for the other. I'm going to believe that God helps you through, that God heals you. That, listen, when I got this, I was madder than a hornet at my son for saying some stupid things that hurt some people. And you know, I read this letter, and he said, my family abandoned me. I thought of it. You know, I thought of it. You probably deserved it because I was angry at my son at the time, and I know that he deserves me to kick him once or twice. But then I thought about it, and I saw his heart. And I thought, no, i got to love my brother here. And I wish that someone would love my son. And that someone would reach out to him. So here's what I want to say. We're in this together, aren't we? And listen, I'm going to be by your side as long as you have breath. Whoever goes home first, I'm going to be standing with you. I'm going to be agreeing together with you. So what I'm saying is, it's not so bad, is it? If one can put so many to flight, two can put a lot to flight. So the enemy does not have a chance in your life. You're a winner. You got the victory. In Jesus' name. Father, we love you. We love you. We love you. Help us. Lord, work in our life, we pray. Lord, work in our life, we pray. We surrender to you. You say, fear the Lord. So here's what we do. We do fear you. Not in a bad way, in a respectful way. That you're almighty, you're strong. We, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. So we fear you. And we want you a part of our life. We're sorry. For the mistakes we made, we're sorry for hurting you. 
hurting other people. God, we hurt other people. We don't like it. So we're here now saying publicly we're sorry. And we need your help. Help your people this week. In the midnight hour, this week, Lord, on a Tuesday, deliver somebody. Lord, I'm believing that tonight that someone is going to be healed. Lord, send your angels to do your bidding, your work, to talk to that person on the job, that boss, that relative. Jesus, please, we love you. We thank you. Your saints are precious in your sight, Lord. Repeat this after me, dear Jesus, I love you. I need you. Come into my heart. I make you my Lord and Savior. I accept.